The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Rise on the Occasion. I know this is a little bit different. We're filming here on a Thursday night, and obviously you guys will see this episode upcoming on Friday. And we're doing a little bit different on the topic. I know we don't usually get to break into this type of topic as much as we usually used to, which it kind of hurts a little bit. Everyone knows me. If you guys have watched plenty of episodes, I'm the hockey guy in this situation. But usually we're always covering so much like football, UFC, and so much other sporting events going on but we're flipping the script a little bit we're diving into some college hockey and we're going to be briefly talking a little bit about the nhl but first things first obviously i'm not alone in the studio and i got my i'm used to saying host here but now i have to say co-host because i'm hell in the reins tonight i got josh here with me but josh how you doing tonight i'm doing pretty good uh yeah i mean it's you're not the only hockey guy i mean yeah, you, you're well, you're the main hockey guy yeah. but yeah def- definitely definitely more more of an enthusi- enthusiast than i think of than me i think blake would be more or less just be like a an outside yeah, fan or something definitely. of the sort but he's from the south so you can't blame him too much yeah you really can't give blake too much crap like you say he's <laughs> from the south but also we are not alone tonight ladies and gentlemen we got both alex tracy the goaltender for the minnesota mavericks and we also have brendan olsen the left wing number 25 for the minnesota mavericks first off i appreciate you guys both for hopping on and uh obviously welcome to the show then i know you guys obviously have a busy weekend this upcoming weekend playing st thomas going for that number one position and hopefully the minnesota mavericks can come out of it and that number one spot but first things first i'm gonna kick it off you trace how you doing then um give us a little bit of a profile about yourself just because i know we've had olsen on the on the show before but we've never had you on the episode so i'm gonna kick it off you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. First of all, uh, it's always great to great to see you. I know we've had some um, difficulties trying to trying to get this together, but it's great to finally um, finally hop on. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a little background. I'm uh, I was born and raised in Chicago. Played uh, most of my youth youth hockey there, um, and then up until through high school, I, I stayed home and graduated high school, and then went and played juniors. I spent one year in the North American Hockey League for Johnstown with the Tomahawks and then had a good year there. Got drafted by Sioux City um, by our current coach, Luke Strand. Um, Small world. Over there. Played played two years there um, and then got the opportunity to pursue mm. my career academically and athletically at Minnesota State and entering or I'm in my sophomore year right now and Things are going well. You kind of mentioned we have a big weekend ahead playing St. Thomas, and it's going to be exciting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, then going to the gentleman right next to you, I know we've had him on the show one other time, but go ahead, Oli, like I said to Trace, give a little bit of background by yourself. I know you've had some stuff obviously pop up since the last time you've been on the show, so go ahead and fill in everybody about what's been going on. Yeah, well, uh, thanks again for having me. I mean, Trace are excited to be here, and um but uh, I'm an Eau Claire guy. I grew up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, grew up playing hockey there and kind of went to Eau Claire Memorial. And from there, just kind of junior path kind of all over from Sioux Falls to Janesville to Sioux City, where me and Trace uh, came together and uh, crossed paths. And um, then later um, found out he was coming to Mankato. So pretty exciting stuff there. And then... Um, yeah, the first – I'm a junior this year here at uh, Minnesota State. And Man, you're getting old. <laughs> yeah. Trace is over there a like sophomore. Was, he's got a little more life in him, but, I mean, he's still yeah, young. Yeah, I got a little, little bit of time. <laughs> it's, it's kind of odd because I'm not used to being the oldest one in the room. Yeah. This is weird. <laughs> yeah. I know. And, uh, yeah, we got some old guys at, here at Minnesota State. There's a lot going on in the locker room. Um, it's fun once you get to know – certain guys and uh you know just connect on them outside of the rink and develop relationships that way uh which has just been kind of really what i've seen as the biggest blessing over these crazy hockey years and the journey that it's been um it's just the neat relationships that i've started to develop with guys like trace and like he noted uh having strand again as our coach and it's just crazy how small the hockey world is and um just how it's fun how you can play with guys you used to play with and play against guys you used to play with or, but, um, but yeah, other than that, I've, uh, 
from what's changed since I've last been on, I recently got married here uh, last August 5th to my wife, Molly, and uh, she is nursing full-time here at a hospital in St. Peter, so we've been, uh, Lord's blessed us just to grow together here in Mankato and start our journey while we're uh, a little younger, but it's been fun, so... I mean, hey, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I'm, I'm 26 going on 27 this year. I, I got married whenever I was 21. So, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, definitely one thing. I think it's, I think it's a good thing to get married, married early. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, so. it's, it, it's kind of crazy. You know, we're, we're talking about age. It's kind of crazy with, with the entire, I feel like just hockey in general is just a little different than a lot of sports. Uh, I, I would compare it maybe a little bit with baseball in this sense, just the fact that you might have a guy that's only 18 years old playing with a bunch of guys that are, you know, in their thirties, like Connor Bedard right now playing in the NHL or, or vice versa, even in college, I feel like you still have that, that wide range of, of different guys from all over the, uh, all over the world, uh, all over yeah. in age groups and everything. It's, it's, it's definitely a unique sport in that sense that I feel like you get a lot more versatility in, in what kind of guys you're, mm-hmm. you're playing with and what kind of guys you build a relationship with. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. Like, it's it's definitely mind boggling to me how how far you guys have definitely come. Obviously, as both you Trace and you Ols from where you guys first began to <clears throat> just trying to pursue like every hockey player's dreams to become in the NHL. And of course, both of you guys probably know a lot more people than I obviously do that have gone to that gone to that level and made it to the NHL. The only person that I can obviously say that I know truly is Livy, who played with you guys last year. Then it's definitely weird not seeing Livy up in Minnesota state, but I know he's, he's doing everything he can to get back up. I know he played a little bit at the end of the year with Nashville, then getting back full swing up in the minor league affiliate team for the Nashville predators. But going off, we're going to be starting off. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the CCHA for the conference that both Brendan and Alex both play in. Obviously looking at the standings, looking at them right now, Minnesota state has bounced back from last week's, game against um, a really good team that I didn't think was as good as I expected, but Northern Michigan definitely surprised me. I'm not going to lie. I know it went into the shootout. Then Trace, I'm going to kick it off with you first. As the game progressed going on, what was your, what was your thought process going through? And especially the first 20 minutes, just thinking of Northern Michigan, how they just came out the first 20 minutes, what was your mindset going through and how did you think the game was going to overall turn out? Yeah, that's kind of the thing about uh, our league uh, and the CCHA. I mean, you can look at records or you can look at pairwise and rankings and stuff like that. But I think every team, like you, you can't take any team lightly, no matter if you're at the top or you're at the bottom. And I think that everyone plays each other super well and everyone's very competitive and wants to win, especially when you get into the, the second half of the year, like we are now, like yeah. and it starts to become crunch time. And you look at the standings now and there's a good four or five, you can possibly even throw six teams in there that are um, fighting for that, fighting for the McNaughton cup. And I think going into the weekend, we, we kind of knew that, but I think uh, Northern Michigan had a good game, game plan coming out and kind of maybe throw in the first punch a little bit, but I like how we responded. And I think we, we kind of got a little unlucky in some, some certain areas and maybe didn't execute in some spots that we wanted to in that game. And, um, you know, obviously it finished with the, with the shootout loss, but I think we still felt confident in, in how we, could could play and i mentioned it um earlier before we were on the show about um playing a little better on on saturdays as opposed to fridays lately and i think we kind of carried into that narrative a a little more something we're hoping to kind of weed out of our game but um yeah they're they're a tough team to play against they got some good individual skill and it showcased in the first 20 minutes i think it took a little bit uh for us to get used to it and kind of come out and play how we know that we have to play. Yeah, definitely. Man. Brennan, I know we've seen this a lot before, as Trace just mentioned. It seemed like it goes not your guys' way on Friday games compared to Saturday games. Does it seem like when you get those double headers going up into the Mayo, does it seem like when you get into those Friday games, you think it's just a learning game just to begin with, then you guys take a look at, um, take a look at everything and just capitalize on – possibly making these little itty bitty adjustments going into Saturday's game, then what do you, what do you, what's your mindset basically coming from a Friday's perspective game, whether it be a win or a loss, not 
counting this last weekend. But I mean, just coming from that overall mindset, what's what's your process just going through just to the next game day by day? Um, you know, I think it's it kind of just goes back to I don't know because I mean, there's a lot you can look at going from a Friday to a Saturday game, um, but a lot of it is just how ready each team is and um you know i think in terms of just the way things have been on friday night for us i think there's a lot of things you can consider but um sometimes i think if we can just go out and play our game is when we're best uh you know that's when when we're going to play the best and i think at this time of the year too you can go over so many X's and O's and uh, talk about the other team so much that like, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all going to go out and play the game. We know how, and, you know, play with confidence, which is being doing what's best in the moment that, you know, we're given. And um, it kind of just comes down to being ready. And I think that's something we've lacked and we've also addressed lately. Um, But, at the, at the end of the day, too, we had, do have a lot of new guys and a lot of new transfers that have come from different um, conferences around the country. And, you know, so they're facing an opponent that they've never played before, whereas mm-hmm. guys that are returners on our team have played these teams and kind of know what they're like. Um, so maybe an adjustment that way. But, um, yeah, I think. It's definitely a good. That, it's definitely a good overall aspect that I, compared to when I played on, I I wish I could have played when I played hockey here in Sioux City, not with the not with Tracy or Alex. I wish that would have been a dream come true, but obviously I don't get that lucky. Um, I when we played, I played on Saturdays, Saturday nights, and then Sunday matinee games. I wish it would have been flip flop where we play Friday nights and then Saturday afternoons or whatever the situation is. It's definitely a big big learning curve coming from the first night to the second night obviously but Josh I know talking about the Minnesota Mavericks a little bit here just from what they've been doing and progressing the first half of the year for the Minnesota Mavericks it was definitely a strong one to begin going off from the very beginning setting the tone for the Minnesota Mavericks it definitely got out the gate rolling really well then just looking at um, what Minnesota has been able to bring and just for a all the um, all the teams that they have to go through, like looking at their looking at the CCHA, listening off teams, obviously St. Thomas, Minnesota State, Lake Superior, Michigan State, Michigan Tech, excuse me, Northern Michigan, Bowling Green, and Ferris State, and now we'll be adding this new team here up in Sioux Falls, just north of us having the Augustana Vikings coming aboard. I know the Minnesota Mavericks just recently played them not too long ago up in Sioux Falls, and then I was able to make the drive up, then it was definitely a fun atmosphere. I mean, take it for granted they didn't get to play in their new arena yet just because it wasn't built. But I know when we were talking the other night about the NHL and having a specific number of teams, then you bringing up the topic to me about um, about the p- possibility of having a new team come into the league. I know looking at this roster, obviously seven right now, then bumping it up to eight for the CCHA. Um, do you think this is – a uh, a good number, a small number, or do you think that there could be some room for more teams to grow? Or give me your give me your thoughts about this. Yeah, this is something I think that, that college sports. Uh, I mean, for the most part, when you talk about, I guess, w- with basketball, uh, baseball, and hockey, all three, I feel like you get a good mixture of teams that are from smaller conferences, like your guys, like your guys' school. You know, Minnesota State's not really known for being a powerhouse football program. Uh, they're they're really known for more more along the same lines of, of being in hockey when you're talking about the national stage. Um, so, you know, it's it's definitely one of those things. I think adding to a conference like this where you've only got seven round, rounding it up to eight teams, right? Yep. Uh, and so, you know, I think that's I think that's definitely something to take into into factor. I, I like the idea of being able to open up to some more teams when it's that small of a number. Uh, mm-hmm. What we were talking about, I think, is going from going from 32 teams that are all fighting for one single goal. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty tough to, to make that, you know, now into 33 teams and yeah. who knows, who knows where it's going to go from there. Yeah. Um, but uh, Tracy uh, and, and Olson, I, I want to kind of pick on you guys and ask you guys a little bit of questions just about your career overall. Uh, Trace, we'll, we'll start with you uh, and kind of going back to when you first started, when, when did you decide that it was hockey? Because for me, I can remember growing up, I played all kinds of sports. Um, and it would have been really difficult for me 
to have had to leave one sport to go on to the next. Was that kind of the way that was for you guys? Uh, did, did you start off with one sport or was it really just always hockey? Yeah. So I think, um, I think when you ask a lot of guys, like, especially when you get, um, like to like the college level and junior level, when you ask them kind of when they started playing hockey, you get a lot of answers. Like, you know, Oh, I strapped on the skates when I was two, three, four, you know, uh, some, some of these really early ages. Um, but hockey wasn't really, um, uh, very popular in my family, um, before, before I decided to, to choose to play that, it was more so, um, like my dad was a football player. My, my mom was volleyball, softball, and you know, all my, all my uncles were football, baseball, basketball as well. Um, but I always loved watching the, the Blackhawks on TV. So I started skating when I was probably seven, eight, um, didn't make the goalie change until I was about nine, but I kind of knew it was, uh, something that I wanted to go into. I mean, I was playing football, um, football and baseball at the time I played baseball up until my, uh, the end of my freshman year of high school. And then football, I'd stop right away because I was always skipping practices to go to hockey. Coaches weren't liking it. So I kind of gave up on that one pretty quick, but baseball being in the two different seasons, I was able to, to string that along for a little bit, at least up until, um, high school. Um, and then I actually have a, I have a pretty funny story. So I started off as a defenseman when I was probably seven or eight. And then we had a three on three, um, tournament like for for a summer and you know I, I was a defenseman and didn't really I always was intrigued by like playing goalie but never really had like a, a a nag for it and our goalie we only had one at the time the day of the tournament decided that he didn't want to play goalie anymore he wanted to go out and skate and, and score goals so we didn't have a goalie for for that specific tournament and I was like you know what like whatever i'll hop in so we switched gear completely i hopped in his goalie gear he used my my player gear and we ended up going all the way to the championship game and then wow. right before the game he ends up wanting to switch back and i was like you know i was starting to like playing goalie i was kind of getting to a rhythm routine so i'm like you know i think i think i want to like keep doing this so when he asked to change a little reluctant but i mean i was wearing the, the guy's gear i couldn't say no um, we end up losing. We end up losing that championship game. <laughs> See, and, you no. should have said no. Oh. And nine, <laughs> nine year old me was was so mad. I went home. I told my parents, like, Mom, I want to be goalie like next year. Like, I, I have to. Like, I'm never letting that happen again. And you know, they were probably they probably weren't too thrilled to hear that. Looking at all the price tags for goalie gear <laughs> nowadays, especially back then. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah that's I mean, kind of how it started. The next year, I ended up being a goalie, and that's haven't looked back from there. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Knowing that, you know, like just basically just being thrown in the net and doing well at it and excelling. Uh, you know, it's, I, I always, I always tease, uh, my, my uncles, he, he used to be a goalie. Uh, he was pretty, pretty highly, uh, recruited in Iowa and everything. And one of the top goalies in the state, but, uh, I always, I always tease him and I te tease goalies just in general that they're, they're crazy for standing, standing there, you know, especially once you get up to the, the level that you're at where you've got, you know, 70 mile an hour, sometimes 90 mile an hour pucks flying right at your face. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize like underneath those pads, that still hurts a little bit. So <laughs> it's, it's definitely, yeah. there, definitely there, there, there are some days, definitely <clears throat> there are some, sorry, to cut you off, but there are some oh, days yeah. in practice, you know, and when guys, especially like Oli cut to the middle and rifle one that hits you right <laughs> between the eyes, you start oh, thinking, why did you this position? <laughs> Just yeah. ring his bell. Uh, no, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and then uh, Brendan, kind of going over to you now. Where, where, when did you when did you finally find the passion that hockey was it? Um, because obviously both of you guys have made it to a pretty high level uh, in in hockey now. Both very talented to be able to make it mm -hmm. this far. When was it for you that you decided hockey was the sport that you wanted to go with? Um, probably at a really young age i kind of grew up around the outdoor rink ordeal so my dad built one in our backyard every winter ever since i was like man four years old or so so i started skating in, uh, in our backyard really young and um my dad would take me to open skate and i just really loved to skate and like rip laps around even without the puck but um so I, I loved it ever since I was little, I'd say, because my dad played hockey, I guess, um, kind of opposite of Tracy's parents. But my dad played his whole life, and he um, actually kind of funny played for some of the coaches that I had in juniors. So my um, first year at Sioux Falls, Scotty Owens was a coach, and my dad uh, actually played for him when he played for the Madison Capitals. I guess when he was playing. So it's kind of funny 
um, that way on the small hockey world. But um, yeah, I'd say from a pretty, pretty young age, I was strapping them up and it was kind of my main sport throughout my years in school. And I, I played soccer a little bit and a little bit of tennis, but um, hockey was always kind of my my go to. So yeah, it's it's interesting whenever you get you get guys like like yourself who grew up. I feel like that's it, to me. It feels like a majority of hockey players. It was like, you know, this is kind of what I, I was in. And then you've got uh, some guys like you, Tracy, who you know, it, it's just something that you're your first generation. And, you know, it was just mm-hmm. something that you found a, kind of fell in love with. And whenever he's talking about strapping them up and whipping laps around the, the open ice rink or anything yeah. like that. Doesn't doesn't bring back any memories, does it? No, no, <laughs> not really. But um, we could we could probably go on for how many times we almost got kicked out of IBP. That's for dang sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, we had our names known. That was for sure. Yeah. Anybody else? Just like okay, just a random person, random person. Oh no, we need to keep an eye on these two. So they'll definitely be kicked out within twenty minutes. That's for dang sure. But I know. Um, obviously, jumping b- back and forth between both you, Alex, and both you, Brendan. I know. It's definitely been a fun process just to see, especially for myself. I've seen a little bit more than Josh has. Obviously, both you guys playing in the in the USHL here in Sioux City. Then give me – I'm going to start off with you, Alex. Give me your mindset because I know it was probably the best feeling ever coming from the Sioux City Musketeers after winning the Clark Cup in your final year. You couldn't go off any better of – of a sign off to Sioux city then now obviously being up in Minnesota state. Is there a lot of, is there plenty of times that you look back at the USHL and think, I can't believe that this dream is really becoming a reality. And if so, when did that finally really, really hit you and think this is, this is really becoming a dream come true. Yeah. I mean, my entire time in Sioux city was special. I mean, not only from, obviously you, you talked about the, the Clark cup run that we had that year, which was, which was awesome. Like in terms of on the ice, but, but off the ice too, like my, my billets, like the Harders, Chris and Tim and their, their kids, uh, Grant, Libby, Brooke, like they were all incredible people to me, like my entire time I was there. So I was so grateful for them. And then just the fans like around the, the team as well. Like it was, the, the whole experience together, like including the hockey, but the hockey and the billets and the fans and, and all of that, when it was wrapped into one, like it was just, a, just an awesome experience. And I obviously think about the, those times a lot and um, the way that it all ended, you talked about with the, with the Clark cup championship. Um, it was, it was kind of, it was hard to move on, you know, like the start of the next season, it was like, wait, like, it's like, I got to go back to, you know, get back to work and start off like a whole, a whole new year. It was kind of one of those feelings that you wish lasted forever, but you know, obviously they don't. And I was, it was awesome being able to cherish with, with those guys. And then not even, um, not even just that year alone, you know, uh, Ole kind of mentioned it earlier that we played on, on the same team in, in Sioux city the year before, like that group was, was special too. We, unfortunately we, we couldn't get it done, but it didn't even matter with how, how close we were and, you know, meeting people like like Oli who became brothers for life and it's uh the, the journey and the experiences I had there and the relationships are or would all make it worth it and I think look being able to be in this spot that I am now looking back on it just makes it even more special I think I might cry a little bit that was really touching but <laughs> um I and plus I still can't talk regularly since you guys won the Clark Cup that's for sure I usually don't sound yeah. like this but ever since then I haven't been able to sound the same but Ole, now I'm gonna kind of kick it off to you a little bit I know obviously as Trace was saying it's definitely unbelievable to to come from a small town here in Sioux City and playing with a whole bunch of brothers that you'll never forget and have brothers for life like Trace said and going to college now, what's it like? Is it is it more fun to play against the people that you were on, that were on your line, or is it is it not as fun? Just because at the end of the day, when the when the laces are off, obviously you know they're they're still brothers for life. Whether whether you guys win, whether you guys lose, take us to the mindset and what it's like. Especially one person I can think off the top of my head is um, Kirk, Captain Kirk, Kirkland Irie, and. Uh, it's probably definitely fun seeing the, it almost feels like a family reunion, especially when he comes to town playing up in Minnesota state. Yeah. Uh, no, I thought you, I think you hit it on the head, but like, it's fun. Um, 
at the end of the day, sometimes I, I miss it because all you get is, uh, as you're going through the handshake line, just two seconds of, hey, good to see you. But um, I think it's different when you're doing the every day with, with those guys on your team and um, just being at practice every day and um, not only just playing together or playing in games, but um, kind of like what Trey said and uh, just the relationships like outside of the, outside of the rink and um, just those times and those memories that you developed as people. And um, that's really what was special, I think. And like you look back, I, you know, we had such a close knit team uh, that year in Sioux city. And um, it was unfortunate, I think just how it all ended, but um, like that year was just incredible the way that we all gelled together and um, there's just, you knew there was something going and, and then we kind of had a big fight break out <laughs> and whole train broke loose, but <laughs> Hey, but, I'll tell uh, I'll tell you what though that fight is the that'll be the talk of the Sioux City Musketeers if you're if you're talking between the Sioux City Musketeers and Fargo. I mean, if you guys haven't had an opportunity to go and or know what we're talking about, just look throughout social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or known as X, I mean tw- X, known as Twitter. Um, just pull up Sioux City versus Fargo, and. Um, You'll you'll find out exactly really fast of what we're talking about. That's for dang sure. But I mean, it's our boy jo- Jimmy fighting the goalie. Oh, you can't forget <laughs> yeah. Jammer fighting the goalie. That's for Jimmy. that's for dang sure. I mean, if if I saw Jimmy come up to me, I would just I'd skate as fast as I can the other way. I wouldn't want to get into his. I wouldn't want to get into his way. But I mean, um, Josh, I know, I know we broke into it. I broke into it pretty fast. Like I said, I'm used to you running the show, but it feels weird <laughs> with me running the show. Then I know it would be frowned upon, but we can't forget our sponsors. And um, who do we, who exactly do we have that we're going to be mentioning up on our sponsors tonight? Because like I said, I'm used to letting Josh do all the talking and now I'm, it's definitely going to be me doing the talking. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Our, our sponsors for this episode is Big Frig. Uh, Big Frig is absolutely an amazing sponsor, amazing product. We always have our Big Frig. Of course, I've got my Big Frig. I had to make sure to fill it up with coffee tonight. Keep me going. Uh, I'm just an all day coffee drinker. Doesn't matter what time of day it is. I'm just always got got my caffeine in my system. It doesn't affect me the way that it would some. But the only way to keep that coffee warm, and the best way to keep it warm, is by using my my Big Frig tumbler. Uh, and of course, huge thanks to Brock for sending over some with our logo on them and everything. So not only tumblers, but coolers. They are amazing products, guys. Go check them out. Uh, Big Frig has always been uh, an amazing product that has really just compared very well with the, the competitors. Not only that, but they give you a great price. On top of that, not only do they give you a great price price at the the you know right there in their store when you go to bigfrig.com, but they will also give you 20% off if you use our code rising220. So you go to bigfrig.com, that's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com, and use that code R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-2-0 at checkout and get yourself 20% off. There's not many better deals than that. Not only are you getting a great product at a great price that compares with just about any other product on the line at a lower price, but they're also going to give you a special deal, 20% off with that code rising220 over at bigfrig.com. You can check them out uh, there. Also the link down in the the description. Check them out, bigfrig.com, an amazing product, amazing people. You do not want to miss out on this deal. Again, bigfrig.com, rising220 for 20% off at checkout. Absolutely, but the one thing I would be disappointed if I didn't say it, you will not be disappointed, everybody. <laughs> but seriously, go check out Big Frig and tell, tell Brock and everybody over at Big Frig that we sent you. But going back, obviously, like I said, we got Alex Tracy and Brendan Olson here from the Minnesota State Mavericks. And um, going on to our next topic, obviously, just rolling into the remainder of the year for the Minnesota Mavericks and talking going into this weekend against the St. Against Saint Thomas. Now, the Minnesota State Mavericks have definitely been on the rise definitely as of late and nothing against them at all because they've always been up there in in the talks but I mean now looking at the Minnesota State Mavericks coming clutch time as Tracy said coming towards the end of the year or what feels like beginning it feels like you're already getting ready for the Frozen Four tournament then just leading up to it I know Tracy I'm going to start this off with you what's the 
what's the overall aspect and mindset just going through everything for getting towards this end of the year and knowing that the the frozen four opportunity is right around the corner it's actually up in um it's actually up in minneapolis this year so i might even me and yep. my cousin josh we definitely might get the opportunity to um, go up to Minneapolis and see the Frozen Four tournament. And hopefully, we see the Minnesota Mavericks in the Frozen Four tournament because I can tell you last time from when the Minnesota Mavericks went all the way, but unfortunately, it wasn't the it wasn't the outcome that we all wanted. It was definitely something that was really really close for you guys. And no, coming into um, coming into this coming into the remainder of the year, um, Trace, like I said, I'm gonna start us off with you. Give me your mindset day in and day out. Um, I kind of already know this answer a little bit, but like I said, give me your mindset going into what you're thinking about the frozen four. Do you think too far ahead or do you guys just take it week by week? Yeah, I think we're just taking it, taking it game by game. I mean, we we're coming down the stretch here. We have eight regular season games remaining and then our, our conference playoff tournament starts. And I think, I think in the past, like, uh, towards the, the beginning half of the season, I think we, as a as a group kind of tended to look into the future um a little more than i think we we wanted to and i think it caused us to it pulled us out of the present moment and who we're playing you know that next game but and i think it kind of we've kind of gotten out of that and i think that could be a reason why we're we're playing better hockey now here in this in this second half and i think as as a team and as a group we're just we're going one game at a time and, and treating it like every game like a playoff game and i think this weekend's going to be a great test obviously it's a battle for first place against a great team like like st thomas who it, it's always a tight game with them um so i think it's gonna be some good experience uh bring it into playoffs and you always want to start playing playoff hockey now you don't want to start when the playoffs start and you know you might allow yourself to, to take some time to to feel the other teams out or feel the playoffs out. But when you start playing big games like we are this weekend now, I think it's it's only beneficial for, for us as a group, and I think that's, that's how we're attacking it just day by day. Absolutely. And it definitely goes to show you for the Minnesota State Mavericks for how you guys have definitely been handling these situations coming back from whether it's a Friday night loss or a Friday night win or just even sweeping the weekend. It's definitely one of those things that you – can't look too far down the stretch and think okay we have this circle and we just got to focus towards this now you just gotta you gotta take it day in and day out one day at a time then also i know you're unfortunately a little bit banged up you got a you got a wrist injury unfortunately you're gonna be you're gonna be out for a little bit of time thankfully it's not a long-term injury that's for sure but also kind of the same question what do you think going into this weekend against a good st thomas team is there anything in particular that you think that is going to be particularly focusing on this one particular aspect of the game or is it just going to be all gas no breaks and just do whatever you can to try and get the puck in the back of the net um you know i think playing st thomas a team like them and uh just the games that we've had against them recently our captain mo kind of hit it on the head today and um i thought just he noted that um just in the recent games that we've played them, we've kind of really given them all their opportunities in a way like we've kind of um, the chances that they've created, um, we kind of gave to them. And so I think at this time of the year too, uh, we're playing good hockey in terms of our defensive abilities now and um, just how hard we are coming back through the dots and, protect in the middle of the ice. So I think that's kind of been what we've stressed a lot in the locker room. Um, and so I think, yeah, just simple things like that and keeping the game simple. I don't like think we have to overcomplicate things, but um, just go out and like Trey said, it's playoff hockey this time of the year. And that's kind of the mindset that we got to have. So yeah, and I know last time that we talked to you, uh, Brendan, that, you know, it was kind of a transition period for you guys because you had it, you know, at, at the time, I don't think you knew who your coach was. And so it was kind of a shock that, you know, your coach leaves, then you got a bunch of guys hit, you know, to kind of transfer out They're they're leaving now too. So it just kind of seems, and it kind of feels like your, your whole team, it, you don't, you don't really know what's going to happen now. You guys had a pretty good season or a really good season last year, uh, making it so far and, and just barely falling short. 
Uh, and then now you come into this season where it looks just as promising. Uh, and of course, I guess for you two, uh, pretty, pretty awesome that coach strand was the guy that, that came in uh, a pretty easy transition for you guys. Um, but how do you think overall the team has, has kind of coped with, uh, adding coach strand to the, to the mix and adding, you know, a new coach in, in general, it's not an, not, not an easy task for the coach, let alone, you know, the entire team also has to go along with it. Yeah. I think, I think strand has done, uh, has done an unbelievable job you know like you mentioned it that it's not easy to come into a position like that where obviously you everyone knows what coach hastings has done with this program and his track record here at, at minnesota state so to take over um, a job like that is, is not easy especially when you have a lot of new guys some transfers you got freshmen coming in then you got the the returners who are staying a lot of different um type of individuals and, and play styles coming into into one system and one program but he's he's such a, a personable guy and a personal coach um, that I think he knows how to how to motivate his players in, in the right way where he doesn't only care about how you're playing on the ice but he cares about you as a person as well so I think that really helps guys develop relationships with him and know that hey if he's you know, if he's giving it to you one day of practice where he's, it seems like he's really harsh on you, it's easier for the guys to, to understand that, hey, he's doing it for, for my own good or he's he's just looking out for me and wants me to do the best that, that I can. And I think that the guys, it maybe took a little bit of getting used to at the beginning, but now that we're here in the second half of the season, I think guys have really gotten accustomed to it and have really bought into what he has to, to offer. And I think it's showing up on the ice. How about, how about you, uh, Brendan? Do you, how, how do you feel like the team is overall just kind of transitioned into Coach Strand coming in and taking over? Oh, I think Trace hit it right on the head. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of change, uh, but I think you'd expect that with any coach that comes through. And uh, just the way that they lead and the way that they build their team is different in every way. And so, um, but I think um, having Strand in was such a great opportunity because being the town that Mankato is and um, kind of the close knit community here uh, gave him a good uh, place to start and just the person that Strand is and the culture uh, community person that he is too with connecting um, the team to the community and the community uh, to the team. And, and so he's just done such, such a good job with that. And, I think that was kind of what we expected from the start, just uh, having, him in, having him in and also having him as a coach in Sioux City. Yeah. It's definitely fun to when you get, as I mentioned before, you go up, you go on the road, then you get these players and you get these coaches. Then later down the road, you can obviously never know that you can cross paths with each other. And obviously for both of your guys' perspective, you've definitely have came across a lot of, past that you guys have definitely came across but I mean looking at the remainder of the year for for everybody it's definitely going to be a fun year for the Minnesota State Mavericks then I would definitely go if you if you get the opportunity to make the drive up to the mail up in Mankato Minnesota it's a really unbelievable arena has unbelievable food great ticket prices the atmosphere is always electric then trace i know it's probably uh it's probably hard to hear at times in the barn same same for you also then i know you get these games that are always just packed and you're you're lucky to maybe hear a whistle if you're lucky yeah and i mean um going back into this weekend obviously for st thomas it's definitely going to be game i would sincerely make the opportunity to go up to then we might be making that drive up to St. Well, I should say down to St. Down to Mankato, see them play against St. Thomas. But, um, it was up to me to check on the schedule too. And yeah. I, and I did, and I forgot to get back to you on it, but it, it, it looks like it should be clear for us to make it over there to Mankato on Saturday. Yeah. So. It's definitely gonna be fun then. Um, I've been to plenty of Mavericks games and Josh, I've only been, to, I, I, I can remember one, but it's been years ago. I, I funny story. I, I almost went to Manca or to a Minnesota state, uh, whenever I was, oh, wow. whenever I was looking around oh, for really? a college to go to, uh, and then kind of decided against it to kind of stay home. Uh, and so it kind of went to a, a community college here in Sioux city. And then I moved away by the time you guys would have been in Sioux city. I was, I was already out of Sioux city. So, and then kind of on my way back, I think my brother actually would have gone up to Madison to, 
to watch you guys win the Clark Cup, uh, Trace. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So it, yeah. He, I actually have the picture with you, so I'll have to send that to you and be like, hey, I actually know this guy from somewhere. But, oh, yeah. yeah. You saw you saw Britain with him? Yeah, he oh, sent yeah. me the picture of it. Oh, that's great. But um, <laughs> obviously, going, I got one more question, then, then we're going to be going to a little bit of a rapid fire session. But before, um, going back before, <laughs> before college now here in – Mankato, but going back to the minors here in the USHL, obviously talking about for your perspective, traces playing with Sioux City. Then also, I know you started with Sioux Falls, the little bit of a rivalry coming down the strip from Sioux Falls, then here to Sioux City. Um, Brendan, how much of um, how much of advice have you? taken from going into the ushl into into college now and how much has that truly transpired into thinking back i'm really glad that i took some of that advice and i'm i'm using it here now in modern day yeah um i think in terms of just the way that the ushl is with uh the hockey and the level of hockey that it's at is uh such a good building spot for uh, players and I think just to be in that culture and that community that the USHL offers with you know having a rink like the Denny Sanford in Sioux Falls that that seats as many as it does and or even in Sioux City the amount of fans that um, these teams are bringing in I think just has an impact on um, the level of play and uh, the intensity of play and so I think that's just been a good building block for all players I think that go into college from the USHL and um, but also at the end of the day I think it's kind of the people that you're surrounded by as you go through the two to three year journey that it is uh, um, going through juniors and the people that you meet and the coaches that you have and just the impact that they can have on you and so I think you learn some of the biggest things in life and um, that you can take, I think, as you look back after all your years of juniors, you kind of see how much it like matured you in so many ways. And um, for me, it was kind of just uh, my faith in God and um, which kind of just was kind of shown to me and I know Tracy as well, just by a coach that we had and um, to see his testimony and the change that the Lord had on his heart. And um, I think that's just something that I've really, that we've taken um, upon us. And as we're in college now, just uh, as um, even a bigger building block than the game of hockey could really give us. So I think there's just multiple ways that we have experienced that and through the game, in the hockey and also the people that has, have came occur- upon our path. So it's, it's definitely fun for, for leading up to this aspect. And it truly is honestly, it's probably one of the most humbling things that you, you start from here and then that process that everybody obviously works through just to, just to make it to the next level of them. We want to take a quick break in this episode, in this interview with Alex Tracy and Brendan Olson, Minnesota state hockey players and we want to bring to you our sponsor for this episode and that is factor factor is an amazing service that you guys need to know know about because factors delicious ready to eat meals make eating better every day very easy wherever tomorrow takes you you can be ready with prepared chef crafted and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door you'll have over 35 different options per week to choose from including keto calorie smart vegan and veggie and so much more and there's, there's more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that can help your weekly meal prepping even more delicious and extremely easy. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and get a feel-good week of meals ready to go. Uh, Factor makes it very easy, not only because they're all delivered right to you, but they're also meals that can be ready in as little as two minutes. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to eat, and you can take them wherever you are. And you can also eat them whenever you're ready to eat them. Uh, We have absolutely loved Factor pretty much since the day that we first started using them. I've been using them for quite some time now. It's very nice to be able to take Factor on the road with me whenever I'm I'm staying out of town, whenever I'm traveling for work, whatever the case may be. Factor makes it very easy because I can take them with me. 
Uh, not only that, but you can sign up and save because we've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout. Every meal is dietitian approved and it's very nutritious and delicious. Uh, like I said, I travel a lot. I'm on the road for work all the time. And so with Factor, it makes it a lot better than eating out. Eating fast food is terrible for you. Uh, and even whenever you eat out at different restaurants, it's just not as healthy as Factor can be. And it's so much cheaper. I know that I've been, definitely been able to save a lot by using Factor. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and head over to factormeals.com slash rising250 and use that code rising250 and get 50% off your first box. And on top of that, this February, you can also get two free wellness shots per box while the subscription is active. So that's code R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 at factormeals.com slash rising250. Get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while that subscription is active. That's an amazing deal you guys cannot miss out on. You do not want to miss out on Factor. Amazing stuff makes everything in, in everyday life so much easier. So again, head over to factormeals.com slash rising250. Use that code rising250 and get 50% get off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while that subscription is active. Doesn't get any, any better than that. Amazing deal. Go check it out. Let's get back to the episode. All right. So obviously, Tracy, I know talking to us, it's definitely been a monumental a monumental journey, obviously, coming from where you are now, now to playing college. Take us through um, how much of a transition has it been coming from your first year playing at the Null, like you mentioned, then playing in the USHL with the Sicilian Musketeers and now being up in Mankato with the Mavericks. How much of a how much of a transition has it been? Has Obviously, I can only assume it's probably gone a lot faster if I had to guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's kind of funny that you say that, um, when a lot of people, the transition was obviously, um, was obviously huge, but maybe not for the the reason that a lot of people think you kind of said that it's probably a lot faster. And I think it's faster in a different sense. I think a lot of people make it the idea like, Oh, like the, the players are a lot faster, like the speed, like everyone's going like moving at a hundred miles an hour as compared to maybe the null to the USHL and then, college to the ushl but it's more so like if you took some gnaw guys and maybe raced them against some college guys like i think it would still be close but i think that the real difference between all the the levels like as you go up is just their ability to make decisions that much quicker so the the flow of the game yes is is a lot a lot faster and especially as a goalie that was something i had to adjust to um moving up every single level is just how quick hey like these guys are getting it's on their tape off their tape and they're picking their spots even more accurately than maybe in the previous level or where it was the the year before so um yeah every every level was um a great experience leading that things that i was able to take into into the next level that i went to but i mean it really showed me the most it, the most important part was just how I prepared and my work ethic every single week in practice being able to to catch up to that that speed that you were talking about um, that really made the difference and got me ready for you know my college career and where I'm at right now it's definitely become an unbelievable sight to see I know at least I've seen a lot of it. Josh hasn't seen it as much as me from the USHL's perspective and seeing you guys persevere and just keep on going but um josh before again to rapid fire questions did you have any other questions that you'd like to ask alex or brendan uh, i guess one for you guys just because i feel like every athlete has some sort of superstition uh whether you want to call it a superstition or just uh maybe a tradition uh that you kind of uphold or maybe just kind of a getting yourself in a rhythm uh, do you guys have any kind of superstitions maybe it'd be something like you got to wear your lucky underwear or maybe like uh, you know, for, for tape Brendan, your, maybe you have to tape it a certain, tape your stick a certain way. Tie your left uh, skate you know, maybe, you ride Yeah, or, yeah. Do you, do you guys have any kind of superstitions or anything like that before games or during game day? Um, I I kind of have a routine. Um, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily call it superstition. Like, you know, I have to, I have to do this this way or else, uh, um, you know, the outcome isn't going to be what I want. I don't really believe in any of that, but I do have a routine. You know, like I like to get – I get the same coffee order like on every every game day and then I'll go to the ring, take my stick, like stuff like that. I'll have the same routine just to kind of get me in the right mindset. But, um, you know, Ole kind of touched on it earlier about um, 
how important our, our faith ha has been to us and me especially since coming to here to Mankato and meeting um, obviously I knew Brendan already but kind of uh, some of the other guys that have that same that same passion for um, for Jesus and just being able to build a fellowship with them so um, I was a guy, you know, who likes to overthink and um, get really anxious before games. And, you know, Me too. it was, uh, you know, something that would really kind of affect my performance sometimes. So something I started doing this year was kind of implementing prayer into my uh, into my routine, not only just game days, but more so game days, but also into to practice days during the week. And that's something that's really um, taken my game physically mentally and most importantly spiritually to to the next level and just focusing on my relationship with him and trusting in god and putting in his his hands and i i couldn't be happier with how uh how that's been going yeah that's that's awesome to hear how about you how about you brendan any superstitions or routines that you got to keep yourself in um no kind of more routine-ish like kind of trace said uh i'm more of a just kind of I have a routine and I stick to it and that's kind of my time schedule that I know how much time I have and before each meeting that we have before the game or whatever. But, um, yeah, like, uh, I think just with that, um, I think just, I don't really have, I like, I like to really stretch out my hips. And so I have this, uh, band thing that I pull on them. And also we have this thing called RPR where we do it before every game and we're basically like rubbing our different parts of our body as hard as we can until it's almost <laughs> bruising, but it's supposed to activate some of our muscles. And so we're just up there as a team rubbing each other and pounding each other down <laughs> before the game. So, yeah, I mean, it, in, in a uh, way, I mean, you can, you can call routine superstition a little bit just because, you know, it, it may, it may affect the way that you play, but it's not necessarily the superstitious side yeah. of it. It's more or less just that, you knocked yourself out of routine. Um, and it's, it's definitely something, mm -hmm. definitely something you've got to keep we'll yourself in. Three lines and uh, do like three stretch lines well, I mean, all and, the way down. And, and each in, line in baseball, have you have the shape. superstition. You're not allowed to step on the line. You know, that's, that's definitely one superstition. Yeah, right. I don't know. Is, is there, is, is there any in hockey like that? I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Trace, can you think of anything? Yeah. Maybe saying saying the the s word to a goalie before a game, you know, shut out. <laughs> that might that might be one that I know some people take very seriously. Yeah. <laughs> what if that's you not, don't that's get the one that came to crease. my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you get in the goalie's crease, you're definitely going to be in for a you're definitely going to be in for a blocker in the back, to say the least. That's for sure. And out of trace, you probably <laughs> you you probably try to keep yourself calm a little bit in those types of situations, but. Um, now, like I said, I'm going to be going into some rapid fire questions, but um, first things first, I'm going to kick it off with you, Trace. Obviously, this is going to be an easy one. Favorite hockey team? The Chicago Blackhawks. They've been oh. they've been my favorite for for so long, and even though we're kind of in some dog years right now, I love yeah. Them. Do you, I'm sorry for your Chicago going. Hey, right you now. you got the savior there now, though, so yeah. he's he's going to turn it around. Yeah, hey, hey, <laughs> old same yeah, question, Connor. That's so wild. Okay, I was, I thought I was oh, watching yeah, a video the other day. That, actually, <laughs> I was thinking you were going to say the San Jose Sharks again. <laughs> <laughs> I have thought about it. Oh man, can't 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 own them anymore this year. I don't think. Hey, I'm picking them to win the Stanley Cup this year. Give, give me a break. <laughs> you could win some big money if they hey, do win. Hey, I can win some pretty hard cash. But <laughs> um, next question, Trace. Favorite hockey memory, USHL or college? Oh, I mean. I know it's, one. It's hard. I'm I mean, curious. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one. I'm gonna go one for for each. Obviously, I mean, winning a Clark Cup was was awesome. I mean, those the memories tied to that to that moment was unbelievable. But um, I probably say like my my first game, you know, in college, playing at, at home against Duluth, you know, um, and kind of just. Talk, I mentioned earlier kind of my, my pregame anxiety. It's kind of the nerves going into that game because the only collegiate action I saw before that was giving up four goals in one period against Omaha um, in our exhibition game. So it wasn't a, we'll wasn't a very slide. hot start. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a very hot start to my collegiate career. And then getting thrown into that, I think Duluth was – ranked fourth in the country at the time and to 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 get a shutout in that in that first game with a, a packed house there seeing it that was definitely a, a special moment um to start my collegiate career 
I thought you were going to say the unbelievable behind the back stop against your former teammate Owen McLaughlin in North so Dakota. It's funny, it's funny you say that because I remember I, I tell people this a lot regarding like that that moment um, when it was happening, like in, in the middle of the play. I remember making that save and thinking in my head, like, "Wow, like that was ugly. Like I, I can't do that again." Like you know, that wasn't back, ugly. Back that was straight filth. <laughs> just like right just in the moment i'm like ooh, like i probably shouldn't do that again you know facing the facing the slot doing the splits you know butts facing straight towards center ice um and then i get off the ice and um just people it was blowing up on my phone people sending me like videos of where it was posted and stuff I, it was just I may really have. unexpected um, <laughs> yeah but it was uh it was funny to see i didn't i didn't know that it was on um Owen ESPN. McLaughlin at the time. I didn't, know, right, I didn't well, know it was on yeah. my former teammate at the time. So when I went back and watched the video and saw it was him, I had to um, – because we were talking after the game and stuff, I had to, I had to let him know a little bit. Because he scored on me the night before the goal that got me pulled. So yeah. I had to get my, my get back on him. Revenge is bittersweet to say the least. Ols, <laughs> favorite pregame go-to meal? Ooh. Uh, pregame go-to meal. I like these Belvita. Um, wafer chips. They got chocolate in the middle. I grab a snack pack of them right when I get to the rink. Oh, so, so good! Out before so, meeting. I'm with them on that one. That's they're so good. <laughs> you might have to. You might have to give me some the next time we go up to Mankato. That sounds pretty I mean, good I, to me. <laughs> I like to pull a Michael Scott. I carbolo. I mean, we have a, a team fettuccine Alfredo. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Like I look forward to that too because we have a team meal that we have every pregame together, and when we go to this Italian spot downtown here dino's on saturdays highly recommend game. really good mm -hmm. yeah, maybe we know where our, our so. lunch or dinner spot whatever whatever yeah. it, is, it turns out to be trust me i can take you plenty of good places i'll probably take you to table yeah. four thank you to Oli yeah. for getting me addicted to that place and now it's become so much of an addiction they almost know me by name so <laughs> thanks um no but next question trace one thing that you could relive all over again? Oh, one thing that I could relive all over again. Um, hockey or not hmm. hockey? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, I don't want to just keep giving the same answer of, you know, winning the Clark Cup in Sioux City because, I mean, that was obviously one of the highlights of my career. Um, I would say um, – I've been really fortunate to have um, some great friends like throughout my my entire childhood. Um, you know, I feel like high school at the end of high school causes some some friend groups to kind of dissolve. But I have um, a group of probably five or six really really close friends that all throughout high school we were we were super tight, and that's kind of where our relationship kind of. Um, started and kind of strung on up until up until now you know we're always checking in on each other playing video games with each other uh, like certain weeknights and stuff so i had such a great time in high school obviously i was playing triple a hockey at the time and that was that was so much fun playing you know close to where i was and the teammates that i had there so i just honestly say like reliving high school if i were to give an answer other than you know winning the clark cup in sioux city Go back to the time when you didn't have as many responsibilities and all that. Yeah, kind of yeah, seriously. Didn't have to, you know, wasn't living completely on, on my own and stuff and didn't have as much responsibilities. Didn't have to go grocery shopping, pay for my, <laughs> my own food and living. So Adulting. Definitely yeah. go back to, yeah, yeah, growing up. Josh, do you have any rapid fires? <laughs> Not that I can think of. I think I pretty much got mine out. All right, well, Ols, I got I got one more rapid fire for each of you guys. Ols, Bauer, or CCM? It's a good one. Uh, Bauer. Uh, well, I expected that. Depends on. Yeah. Why do you say Bauer though? What were you gonna say though? Uh, because I've been stuck with it the past how many years? I don't think I've ever been on a team ever that has been sponsored by CCM. Besides, yeah, actually no. Every year, it's been <laughs> Bauer. Well, that that sums it up pretty easy. Uh, makes it makes it. I used easy. to like CCM's breezers, but um, pretty much been using Bauer, everything Bauer. So I like the forty five hundreds that they make the best, and I think it's a really good design. I think if I were to ever design a helmet, I'd take that shell and just put some a little better padding inside because right now all all I got in my head is just some yellow 
hard foam. <laughs> hey, those will, that can that can rattle the bucket. I know that feeling. Trace, this is going to be the last one. Best singer on the team. <laughs> Best singer on the team. Oof. Um, I mean. Uh, I honestly probably have to give it to Oli. You know, he's kind of the music guy. On the team. Got, <laughs> I was got waiting guitar, for that he's answer. Going, like, he's got, you know, he's got the voice of an angel. If you let him it's, hear it, it's so. kind of funny now that you know that now that you bring that up too. I feel like that's that just kind of runs in hockey, maybe because I can think back to the days. I guess whenever I was really young, my family was boosters of, of the muskies, and you know, going there. I remember the Christmas parties. They used to put together like a a little carol thing where the team would, would, would all sing and stuff like that. And I feel like mm-hmm. almost every year it, you would have like several guys stand out like, man, these guys are pretty good at singing. So that's, it's kind of crazy that you, that you bring that one up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But... <laughs> yeah. Actually. Go ahead. Wals. I took up guitar a little bit when I was playing in Sioux city with uh, Trace and the other guy that we mentioned, Jimmer Christian Jimenez. Um, but he was quite the guitar player. And so I was, spending quite some time over at his billet house and he was teaching me how to strum it a bit and I kind of took it here and you know kind of helping out some other guys on the team learn guitar and yeah so what you're saying is there's already a Maverick band for each game you guys have is there going to be a Mavericks band 2.0 with the hockey team well to uh actually last weekend we had um his name's Chad Brownlee, he used to play for the Mavs, like, I think he graduated in 2003, but he's, uh, if you look up, if you know Chad Brownlee, he's a pretty high-end country star, so yeah, there's some, uh, there's yeah, some talent some coming out of Mankato. Yeah, yeah Mavericks went grooming singers. <laughs> hey, all I'm saying is, whoever makes it big, make sure you thank us. Because <laughs> yeah. if I didn't, only if you make it big in the country... You know who to text and say, I got a record deal. But I know. <laughs> as much as I would love to keep asking both of these guys a whole bunch of random rapid fire questions, it's that time of the night. Josh, unfortunately, we got to end the show. Yeah, absolutely. We thank everybody for watching. We thank both Alex and Brendan for joining us, uh, coming on. It was fun. It's fun. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't talk about hockey enough, it seems like, but I feel like it's that time of season where. Everything else is winded down. We're gonna have nothing but talky to hockey to talk about. So we're gonna we're gonna be talking all kinds of hockey. Um, but we thank both of you guys and a huge good luck. Uh, and then hopefully we see you guys this weekend. Uh, and then for everybody watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well. And you can always comment down below. Uh, and if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts, make sure to give us a five star review. The best way to help us over there. But again, we thank everybody so much for all of the love, all of the support. We'll see you next time.